And welcome back to another edition of Against the Grain Sports. It's me, Gerard McCain. I'm here with Jody Coleman and Jason Coleman. Today, we're going to discuss all of the NFL trades and, and signings. Uh, I'm trying to just, you know, get your, your perspective on what teams were winners, what teams were losers, who made the right moves, who didn't. And Jody, just go ahead and let's jump right into it. What what teams do you think made the best moves possible with the available free agents that was available? Hey, well, once again, man, this is one of my favorite times of the year, and that's NFL free agency. I mean, I, I get so excited around these times because this is what we go. It kind of gives us that hype to the NFL season. You know, we we know we we have NFL is the ruler of all sports right now. So no matter what season it is, it's always football season. So I'm gonna jump right into some of the things, some of the people, some of the players that kept kept on teams, got franchised and got traded. So some of the ones, of course, the top one is Dak Prescott staying in Dallas once again. I don't think that was a great move, but that's just me. Go back to against the grain sports and see what I said. Two, the Giants kept Leonard Williams. Uh, Chris Godwin went back to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is definitely the winner so far. Tampa Bay has brought back every starter on offense, the offensive side of the ball. And I know Jason's going to have something to say about that, but I think Donovan Smith, the, left, the tackle, was one of the key pieces to keep Tom Brady healthy and upright. Uh, Allen Robertson went back to the Bears. I really was scratching my head on that one because you don't know who's going to play quarterback. And guess what we do know? It's going to be Andy Dalton, drive. That's your guy. Andy Dalton. They, so – so basically, they, they let Mitchell Trubisky go. He's playing for the Buffalo Bills now. And you bring in Andy Dalton, a, not a mobile quarterback, a guy that went five and five with the Dallas Cowboys, and you bring him into Chicago to save your franchise. I'm that's, gonna, not I'm, the, that, that's not the first time Chicago has paid a quarterback that was not up to par, but go ahead. So, so you mean like guys like, uh, was it Eric Kramer? Yeah, Eric Kramer. Eric Kramer was pretty good for a few minutes, for years. What about, years. What about Jim? What about Jim Miller? Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, didn't they try uh, Steve Walsh at one point? They did. They I'm did. Just like, I, 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 I never get it. I get like the Bears franchise. I don't understand. They also what, had a guy named Jay Cutler. Jay, that Jay, Jay Cutler was in the NFC, NFC Championship game. He was he was solid for a couple years. Listen, Jay Cutler is the oh, best right. quarterback in Chicago Bear history. And that's not he ain't better than Jim McMahon, man. Come on, man. Hey, That's Jim McMahon, fair. Jim McMahon had a great defense, man, so I don't know. But we're going to keep but, going, but though. We got some other ones. We got some other. Aaron Jones staying at running back in Green Bay. I think that's really really telling Aaron Rodgers that they want to make another run for it because right now we don't know where Green Bay is going to go. They still haven't addressed that other wide receiver outside of Devontae Adams. I think defensively they haven't really solidified the upfront game to help stop the run, and they don't get it to me. They don't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And if you see teams that have won the Super Bowl like Tampa Bay, they got edge rushers galore. And I thought the Smith brothers was going to really bring them a lot of pressure, but they didn't last season. So I think Green Bay needs to either address it in some more free agent pickups or perhaps address it in the draft. Now, another one of my winners also is the New England Patriots. New England Patriots spent more money this year than they have spent in the last three years combined because – I don't think I don't think Bill Belichick is too happy with seeing Tom Brady hold that up. That's like your ex-girlfriend getting married to that whack dude. You know what I'm saying? You know, he like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I don't think Bill Belichick is too happy with seeing Tom ho hoisting up that trophy. So I think he went and made a lot of key moves. But we're gonna see how it pans out for them getting John o. Smith and getting Hunter Henry, bringing back the two tight end sets, uh, getting some offensive line help. I really want to see, but they still really need to address the outside. Um, outside receiver position, the playmaker positions. But defensively, they got a lot of guys that opted out. They got those guys back. Uh, we also got the Washington Redskins making a little noise. They brought Fitz Magic in the Washington for at least one year gap, at least a one year gap till they draft the quarterback. Now they got, they went and got Chris Samuels, that uh, Terry McClure on the outside. They got a lot of play, they defense. We know their defense is lights, lights out. And in that division, if they go nine and seven, I think they got a chance of winning that division. And then let's not forget, they gave, they gave uh, Tampa Bay a little run for their money in that playoff game, man. Um, I think they had one of the better chances of beating them than any other team in the in the NFL during the playoffs. Shaq Barrett going back to Tampa Bay, of course. We said that, uh, you know, it's a lot. It's a, John John Johnson the third went to the Cleveland Cleveland Browns. I think that was very key. One of the better coverage, uh, safe, strong saves in the league. Which what, what was Cleveland's Achilles heel? They couldn't stop anything on the back end. Every time you looked up. They were getting beat for a bomb, and I think and this Sandale. is going to solidify that. I mean, they, 
everybody was scoring on Cleveland, man. I, and, and, and they went 11 and 5. Just, just imagine if they can stop somebody. Uh, one of the under under underrated uh, free agent pickups, I think, was Bud Dupree going to the to the Tennessee Titans. I think that helps them on the, with the pass rush. I think they struggle with pass rushers. That was made their secondary struggle. So uh, one that one that got me scratching my head, though, like I said, is the Andy Dalton, the Mitchell Trubisky going to Buffalo, being a backup. I think he still had a little bit of football left in him. He didn't turn the ball over a lot. I think he should, he's better than some of these quarterbacks that started, and he's better than some of these quarterbacks they they think they want to draft. So. He wasn't that bad. I just think that the Bears system didn't fit him. But let's uh, – Sammy Watkins just signed with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Ravens. I, yeah. I think that gives them some type of pos- – he's a more possession receiver, and that's what Lamar Jackson needs, a sure-handed possession receiver uh, to not have to go to the tight end so much. And I think that really helps Lamar Jackson, his development, as he grows in his lead as being a better passer. But let's talk about some key free agents that's not signed, Jason. Uh, Alden Smith, where do you think he's going to go – Potentially, Alden Smith is not going to resign with the Dallas Cowboys. I think he had a great uh, rebirth to his career. Where do you think that he lands? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what, what the market is out there for Alden Smith. I think uh, the money's starting to dry up, so I don't know if he's trying still trying to get a big deal or is he going to take one another prove it deal. So um, I can see him landing someplace like Atlanta, maybe Tennessee, um, to try to help improve that pass for us. I think since I think Brable, you know, Mike Brable, the person, the player, he all he's all about getting to that quarterback. So. If Alden Smith has something left, I, I can see Tennessee being a likely landing spot for him to, uh, you know, reju- to try to rejuvenate his career and try to hit big one more time before he retires. What about Richard Sermon? Man, how much gas did Richard Sermon have in the tank? And why has he been been acquired by one of these good, uh, teams that can potentially be contenders? I think Richard Sherman needs to uh, really think about moving to safety. I think, um, you know, he doesn't have the long speed. And, uh, he no longer has the speed to play the cornerback position. Um so I think it would be for, for him to continue his career, if a move to safety will be would, would kind of, you know, give him a couple of extra years so he can you know, kind of ride this thing out and retire. I can see, like, you know, Robert Salah, he went to the Jets, so I can see him going to the Jets perhaps uh, being more of a kind of a mentor to the secondary pairing, pairing with Marcus May. Marcus May was an underrated, probably one of the better safeties in the league nobody talks about. Um, but you pair him with Marcus May, and they kind of, you know, get, the, get their defense a, kind of a foundation. The secondary, a vocal leader that can, they can they can kind of learn and learn from and kind of build off of. Now the NFL is always starving for edge rushers, and we got two edge rushers that's still available out here that's very very good. Had a lot of productive seasons. One of them being Melvin Ingram. Why is Melvin Ingram not signed with somebody at least a one year deal to prove that he can still play? That's a good question. I, again, I, I, these teams that need pass rushers. I mean, the the guy, like I said, the money drop that money is drawn. Uh, you know, come come to a pause. So I'm thinking, you know, this this man was looking. He was just in line for a big extension last year before he got hurt, and now he can't even find a job. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe he'd be a training camp body. Somebody bring in uh, maybe in June. Um, you know, there's teams. I mean, the Texans are giving anybody money. He wants to come play there, which is kind of sad. I can see him going maybe to Texas and doing a prove it deal. Again, Atlanta is another team who, who needs pass rush uh, pass rush help. He can go there. Carolina is another team needs pass rush pass, pass rush help. Plays for uh, college football in South Carolina, so I can see him going there. Um, you know, the Jets are another team that needs pass rush help. The Bengals need pass rush help, so I can see I can see these teams perhaps taking a chance on Melvin Ingram and getting bringing him in one year deal, maybe giving five million dollars with some incentives and, and, and letting him go. Well, let's let's maybe, talk about this. Go ahead. Maybe there's something in the draft. Some of these teams are waiting on, and they're just not. Maybe those, they feel like these draft picks may be more valuable than some of these guys who haven't been signed yet the thing with this draft this year there's no there, there there's no there's no great the, the pass rushers in this draft they're they're okay but none of them were like a uh, guy i want to hitch my wagon to and kind of depend on i think there's gonna be some solid players that come out of this draft and maybe give you like three or four like three or four sacks contributing as rotational players as rookies but i don't see anybody that's like a, a chase young out here or even like um um even like a uh, brown from uh, carolina who kind of guys who kind of wreck wreak havoc on the line um, and can pre- prevent, you know, make your team better. I used to see, I can see, you know, I can see a couple, a couple of um, guys going like in late, late first rounds, pass rushes. But you know, if a guy like a proven guy like Melvin Ingram, I think, you know, you you bring that guy in and see if he see if he has something left in the tank. If he doesn't have any left in the tank, you can release him before uh, before the season starts. Right. I just don't see why he's not being uh, being employed right now. Well, let, let me talk about this one. This is one that's really is mind boggling. Before we talk about a little about the NFL draft, the Davion Clowney. He uh, went and visited the Browns, and he would be a great acquisition to Cleveland if they got him on the other side of Miles Garrett. And plus, with Malik Jackson in the middle, right. uh, that would help Cleveland. But once again, he's on the market again for another year. 
uh, I think he's been – he was the number one pick and he had one Pro Bowl season. And, right. and I think he may be a little bit overrated. He doesn't get a mm-hmm. lot of sacks. He's never had a double-digit sack season. But right. why is Clowney not on anybody's roster as of yet? I, I think he's a guy who looks great, but he can't play football. You know? Some people, some people, I mean, if you go back and look at the, the hit against Michigan, I think that was, only, I think that was the only tackle for loss he had in that game. Now, Lord, it, it, he killed that guy. He killed the guy from Michigan. But, he really um, hit him. He really, yeah. But, you know, even in his college career, the guy, he, 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 you know, I think it was just like, there, there are guys who have all the time. He's kind of, he, you know, who he reminds me of, he reminds me of J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith had all the talent in the world. J.R. Smith had enough talent to be a top, I'll say, top 150 player in the NBA in NBA history with the talent that he had. It just never manifested itself together. And he always, he was, he was stuck to be in a role play. He became, he was a six man of the year award. He was at his best when he played for the Knicks, but it just never could manifest itself to becoming like the neck. There was, there was another level that J.R. Smith could have went to that he never reached. And I feel like Jadavion County is the same way. All the talent in the world. He's, when you look at, when you build a player, you want a Jadavion County. And what you get, when he comes out on the field, you get, you know, a guy who's barely made. He's just happy to be here. He's here to collect the check. I don't think he loves football, and that's okay. But I think I just think at, at the end of the day, I just don't. I, I think he just doesn't. It just is something there that doesn't click that you know maximizes the talent that he has. And I think and now he's almost thirty years old, so I don't, I don't think he's ever going to click. So is is it, is it because he's waiting on the bag? Is he because he's look? He's already had a couple good paydays. He had a good payday right. with the Texans. He signed a nice little deal with the Seattle Se- uh, uh, right. Seahawks. But Gerard, real quick, I'm gonna let you jump in on this, man. Do you think is is that he's waiting around for his bag, or or is he is, is he really committed, like Jason said, to play football? What is it, it with Javion Clowney, man? He could have that Ricky Williams syndrome. You know what I'm saying? Ricky yeah. Williams was kind of the same way. Ricky Williams, after he got paid, he just was like, um, all right, I really ain't into football like that no more. So, you know, some guys just. Some some guys just want to get paid and, and and that's about it. And this and then some guys after they get paid, it's like, man, I got so much money, I'm just not into football like that no more because yeah. they start doing so much other stuff and other things start becoming available to them to where, you know, football just becomes like a you know a side hustle or whatever. So right. And, and, and I'm gonna be about, about J.R. Smith, man. I thought J.R. Smith was pretty good, man. I just I think he should have stayed in New York, but you know we know how New York is, or how New York was. But he would have stayed in New York, man. He had he had a couple good seasons in New York. Yeah, like, he was like I say he won six million a year. He was a sock like Jared Smith. But I know people laugh and like they always make fun of him because he makes dumb decisions on the court. But I think Jared like the real Jr. Smith was a damn good basketball player. And I just think you know sometimes it just he you know that ten cent he like a, a million dollar I mean he just didn't have it mentally, and I think. You know, playing in New York didn't help him because I think he was distracted by so many other things. But um, I just think, again, he had all the talent in the world and it just never came together for him. And and that's and that's what we're looking at when it comes to Clowney. My 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 thought process is if he doesn't sign with a team like Cleveland that has another opposite pass rusher, I can see him this being potentially his last NFL season because you know pass rusher get long in the tooth and become thirty and thirty one. Remember Sean Merriman? He was probably mm-hmm. the premier pass rusher. Once he yep. got hurt, it was over. And we do know that Clowney has had injury problems. So yep, exactly. I, I just think that he needs to sign a one-year deal, maybe eight or nine million, and come and prove that he can play this game before anybody pays him long term. But we, we'll right. see. It's, it's visit with Cleveland because Cleveland actually gave him a deal last year that he did not. Now mm. with Cleveland actually winning games, let's see if that, that comes in for fruition. But while I got you guys on a few more minutes, man, can we talk NFL draft a little bit, man, if you don't yeah. mind? Uh we got it, we got uh the Miami Dolphins, the the Philadelphia Eagles making moves, the San Francisco 49ers. So if we look at the draft right now, the top five, we already know who's going number one. We know the Jacksonville Jaguars, unless something catastrophic happens, they're going to get they're going to get who they, they're going to get the top quarterback in the draft. We know that, right? right. Uh, we know we don't even need to say anything else about that. So that's uh, we're already on number two. So the net, the second pick in the draft is the, still the New York Jets. Um, they still have Selm Donald, Selm Donald on their roster. Uh, there's a lot of quarterback names coming up. Zach Wilson, uh, you got Justin Fields, you got Trey Lance, which I told y'all, remember that guy's name in the next five years. He may be the best out of these guys, potentially. Well, Jason, what do you think the Jets are going to do with that number two pick? Do you think they hold on to it? Maybe potential trade? Uh, Russell Wilson may still be in effect. 
with, you know, throwing that, that second pick and, and Sam Darnold together, what do you think the Jets are going to do right now, being on, being on the clock? Yeah, I think I think the Jets. Are, it seems like they're becoming more and more enamored with Zach Wilson, and um, you know the kid. The kid guy. He has he has a lot of talent. The only thing that scares me about Zach Wilson is he played he played at BYU and he played against some terrible competition. Um, and, I, and I think um, you know that would cause that would have a pause for me. Um, they already just went through three years of Sam Donald, who I think would would, would have benefited greatly from going back to school for another year. But I think um, if, if the, like I said, you brought up the Seattle uh, situation with Russell Wilson. The opportunity presents itself. You have to take a look at that and kick the tires on that because, you know, Russell Wilson is a premier quarterback in this league, and you, you, he's only thirty, what, thirty-one years old. Yeah, Russell Wilson, thirty-one years old. Got a, lot, got a lot of football left. We got a lot of football left in him. So you, you, you think about it. You are, you already, you already, you've done a deal with the Seahawks last year when you traded them, um, traded on Jamal Adams. So if you look at it and say, hey, look, uh, we'll give you number two pick, we'll give you number number one pick next year. You send us back Russell Wilson. We'll take that for you. And you give it to Sam Donald on, on top of that. I think Seattle would look really hard at that and probably would not pass that up. So I would, I would think that would be the move I would make if I'm the GM of, of, of the Jets. But, of course, I don't get paid to make those decisions. So I think I, I see them just leaning with Zach Wilson, take, taking this uh, chance with the new coach and, uh, you know, trying to build him up and uh, have them grow together. Okay. Gerard, would you, what would you do with that second pick? Would you, would you make a trade for Russell Wilson? I don't think I will make a trade for Russell Wilson. I would just try to pick the best available quarterback in the draft, man, because the New York Jets, and, and, and this is kind of crazy, but they're really the most popular football team in New York when they're winning. So you want to bring in somebody that you can build a culture around and somebody that you can put that face with the New York Jets, man. And, they haven't been able to do that in some years, man. The last time they was excited, they was super excited about a, a quarterback draft was Geno Smith, and we saw what he did with his opportunity. So cool. <laughs> hey, I don't even know if he played a full season. But. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, though. So the Jets right now, man, that's why I'm saying I don't feel like they should bring in Russell Wilson. I feel like they need to establish a whole new culture with a whole new quarterback, man, and – Hopefully they can pick the right quarterback and go from there. But I wouldn't trade that pick. Okay. Well, if, I, if I'm the Jets, I still this, – this is just me, man. I think you still keep Sam Darnold at quarterback because we don't know how good he was when you didn't put any weapons around him. I think you go get him a weapon. You go get Devontae Smith, the Heisman Trophy. I think he's going – the teams that pass up on Devontae Smith are going to be very sad five and seven years from now when they see how explosive this guy is. Uh, I think that's what I would do. I would build around Sam Darnold. got a lot of money. They're not in the position to win right now, so why even try to go get this quarterback? Why don't you see what Sam Darnold got? He still has a year left on his contract, his rookie deal. He still got a lot of money. Then if it don't work, it's going to be another quarterback that's going to merge. Every year it is. Uh, Jason, third pick. The San Francisco 49ers traded up, but they talking about they're going to keep Jimmy G. What exactly is the thought process in San Francisco by moving up for what? They obviously come to get a quarterback. I just don't know which one it is. And it's, it's, th it's three guys that, that I know they, they, they love Zach Wilson. Uh, I don't think Zach Wilson is going to be there for him. Um, it seems like that would be a perfect marriage for a guy like Justin Fields or Trey Lance because of the offense they both like, the offense they both have played in, um, the run pad, like real heavy quarterback run heavy. However, they, they have a passer who can keep uh, balls down the field. But from research I've been doing, the target is Mac Jones. In that the, high? They could have that high. Mac Jones I, I, I don't get it. But from what I, the research I've been doing, they're, they're coming up to get Mac Jones. And the reason they're coming up to get Mac Jones because he's the ultimate RPO quarterback. I'm just like, that's all he ran at Alabama last year was run pass option. Or it's Kyle Shanahan, run pass option all day. So he's able to distribute the ball to the playmakers that they have around the 49ers. I, 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 I'm not a firm believer in it, but I, I, I'll, you get, I would take, you know, Fields and Lance over, over, over Mac Jones. But, you know, I'm, again, I'm not a decision maker in this, in this process. I mean, John Lynch, he kind of gets, he gets away with making bad picks. Nobody ever says anything about it. Um, so we'll see where he goes with this. I, I like Mac Jones. I like him. But I will keep Jimmy G if I'm going to do all that. Like, he, he already there. <clears throat> Draw, what you think? I think somebody's getting ready to make another mistake like they did with Lamar Jackson. And, you know, <laughs> the 49ers are going to steal 
not come to prominence because somebody's getting ready to make a bad decision. That, that, that's all I can say about that. All right, I think I got, it's a, I got... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut it. I think it's just I think it's ironic that um somehow these white quarterbacks don't have the same questions as the black quarterbacks in, in, in this situation. Ooh. Like uh Ooh. nobody nobody talks about Mac Jones' ability to escape the pass. I know he did a four six, four six, whatever, four six eight during his pro day. But they'll never talk about his ability to read defense. He had one read and run, run pass option. Usually now them everybody's open. So we're, we're, wow. we're requesting Justin Fields by throwing to his first read all the time. I mean, that's all. That's why I saw like Justin Fields also his first read all the time. First, well, his first read's open all the time. Why not throw it to him? Right, right. Nobody talks I'm, about that. Mark Mac Jones had the same thing. He didn't have to scan the field and find other receivers. He had the Heisman winner. He had a, 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 another potential top ten pick, and he had a, a running back who probably go in the first or first or second round. So we're not going. We're not going to criticize him for his options of going to the second, his first option every time. Well, well the 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 stereotype is that black quarterbacks aren't as smart and can't lead a team like a white quarterback can. And that's why we always see these really good black quarterbacks get passed up by white quarterbacks who we like, why would y'all pick him over him? Like, you know, it always boggles our brain that these guys don't get picked. But then when they do get their chance, they always flourish. And, you know, it's, it's the and politics it, of football, and we need to we we need to start talking more about that too. Yeah, that was that was a good insight on that because they don't ever question uh, Mac Jones' ability to read read defenses when he got seven guys that could potentially go in the first round. He got two wide receivers that's going to go in the first round, probably the top ten. He has another uh, two offensive linemen probably going to go in the top in the, in the first round. He got a running back that's going to go in the top for the first round. He's going to go in the first round, and then potentially not, not a first round, but he got a very good tight end. So we're talking about, you know, 80% of your offense that could potentially go in the first, second, or third round, and you you question Justin Fields if he can read defense. You you question Trey Lance if he can read defense. But y'all didn't question that when, when Carson Wentz went there, and he went second. And potentially could have went first, but you want to question Trey Lance's ability to read defenses, but you didn't question uh, uh, Carson Wentz, who has already been traded and didn't even make out his rookie. His rookie, uh, yeah, he did make out his rookie deal. Another, another, one, another fact, he got he got re up. Yeah, Carson Wentz got re up. Another factor you look at, like Zach. Let's look at Zach. Zach Wilson just you know his meteoric rise happened this year. Look at his stats last year. If you go look at that man's stat, the man threw I think he threw twelve interceptions. Yeah, let me touch down twelve interceptions. Last year at BYU, and I'm like, and that was during a full regular season, so it's like nobody, no, but you, but you want to question the man who J- Justin Fields. Let's look at Justin Fields. He threw 41. He had 41 touchdowns and three interceptions to last year, and nobody. Then we still want to talk about his ability to read defenses. The man made one. He didn't make a bad read. Made the right read. The one receiver ran a route, wrong route against Clemson, or he wins the game. So it's like we 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 we. we, we we're, we're comparing opposite points, but I'm like, when, when it all comes to it, it boils down to it's like the skin color. You see the skin color, and you the same the, thing, the, same, the same prospects don't face the same questions. And I think that's becoming a, more and more of an issue. And you can't sit and tell me if you if you sit and watch Justin Fields talk that he's not an intelligent kid. Cause the man can really hold his own conversation when it comes to talking football or any, anything outside of politics. I mean, anything outside of football. So I think it's it's, it's, it's something that I I've been noticing. It's been coming up more and more, and I'm just really bothered by it because I feel like, you know, nobody. It's, it's like we're going to nitpick this quarterback because because of what the last Ohio State quarterback did in the NFL, not necessarily because of the skills. Okay, well, we run out of time. I got I got three different picks. I want y'all to give me a quick. It's going to be rapid fire. We got we have to pick four the Atlanta Atlanta Falcons. Who they pick? I got. I mean, I can see them drafting. Like I think we got four quarterbacks going in the top four picks. And they probably they, they'll do their evaluation, take who, the, whoever's left there, unless it's Mac Jones. I don't see them taking Mac Jones, but um, if he, if Mac Jones is there, but I can see them taking Fields. I can see them taking Lance. Okay, uh, Gerard, we got the fifth pick, the Cincinnati Bengals. Who they pick? The Cincinnati Bengals need to take if, if if Fields or or the other boy is still there. They no, they just went and got Burrow. Yes, 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 even even with Burrows because. Jody, you, you got to look and see how the game is right now. Joe Burrows could get hurt again. And he could get hurt again. Well, it's guess just, what? If you, if you put offensive you, line around me, you won't have to worry about that. And I think, I, I think that's where they need to go. They need, I mean, you got, you got, you got Panay Sue out there. 
and you got Rashawn Slater. I think those two guys will fit. They'll slide in. They can come in and play day one. Even if they had to play guard next year, they can come in and they can play. You got Riley Reef who buys you a little time with, so before you have to move him out the tackle. Hopefully, Jonah Williams can get healthy. And then, or you can look at Jamar Chase, the guy who, who Joe Burrow is familiar with. And they can step in and replace A.J. Green's uh, – for basically, A.J. Green's snaps that, he's, that, that he was getting last year. And I did want to mention A.J. Green went to Arizona. I don't know how effective that's going to be, but he went to Arizona. And last but not least, guys, number six pick is now the Miami Dolphins pick. They got a plethora of picks. What did they, what did they do with that pick? I just – I could see them, like, either going in line or you got to look at Kyle Pitts. I know they have they already have uh, the other tight, the tight end, the Seki there already. But if you put him, match him and Kyle Pitts, I mean – Brian Flores is a Bill Belichick guy. He was around with, when he had the two tight ends with Brock and um, – I'm not going to say that guy's name. He's, he's around with those two guys there. Um, I can, if you put two athletic specimens out in, in the middle of the field, you maximize Tua's uh, – I'm going to say – you maximize Tua's accuracy and it, may, may, it doesn't force him to make those out, those um, long out throws that are not his strength. So you're getting some weapons in the middle of the field that can operate. Pitts is a, he's a great runner after after the catch, and then you, you still got Gasecki can stretch the stretch the seam as well. So I can see them going Kyle Pitts at that, at that uh, position. I definitely look at a weapon with Miami. I think they got to get it outside. If it's not Pitts up the middle, I think they got to look at Waddle. They got to look at uh, Jamar Chase if he's still available, and they got to look at Devontae Smith if he's available. But you got to get a piece on the outside to stretch the stretch the field. And Tua is very familiar with Waddle, and he's very familiar with with. Uh, with Devontae Smith, the guy that he played with. Matter of fact, if y'all remember when he came in his freshman year, didn't he throw a touchdown pass to Devontae Smith in the, in the championship game? Is that correct? Uh, blown coverage, for sure. Yeah. Hey, but he made a dime throw. He looked off the defense. And that's when I knew that Tua was going to be a pro when he made that throw, coming in for uh, coming in and relief uh, for your boy uh, Hurst. Yeah, Hurst. He came in. Yeah. yeah, he came in for relief because Hurst wouldn't get the job. And now look at it. Both of these guys are a potential starting quarterback. Hey, but guys, listen, we got more about the draft. Hey, I want y'all to stay tuned. I want y'all to uh, uh, like and subscribe to the page. Tell me what you think on the draft as we, we slowly approach. We're going to do more draft shows. We're going to give y'all more draft analysis. We're going to tell y'all what y'all favorite team may potentially get, what they're not going to get. We still got a lot of trades that's going to happen before the trade dead. I mean, before the trade deadline, uh, when the draft and stuff comes, everything's going to be a lot of stuff going on in the NFL. You know, anything can happen. We don't even know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. We don't know if he's going to even play this year. So that's going to really change the dynamics of, of what, what the Texans going to do and a lot of quarterback situations are going to be. So once again, I'm your host, Jody Coleman. We got Gerard McCain. We got Jason Coleman. Against the grain sports, sports your way.